Airtable allows users to add pivot tables to interfaces in dashboards. This is a relatively new feature, but it's a very nice reporting feature. I'm going to show you how to get that set up in your Airtable database. Let's say we have a sales table. The sales table links to multiple clients. It shows the date of the sale and the amount. This is the basic information we need to get started. From here, what we are going to do is go into the interfaces tab, start building. We'll build a new interface and you can label it and select your icon next here. We're going to go use this new dashboard option here. Click into it, go next. And I want to choose my sales table. Go into that and we'll finish it. And it's going to pre-build some options and charts and graphs here for you. What this has done, just showing me a count of all the sales that exist within my sales table. Here is a bar graph, bar chart that shows sales by day in this case, or by date. And down here is what I want to get into. It actually automatically adds a pivot table for us. This doesn't tell us a whole lot. We want to configure it to fit our needs. We'll click on the pivot table, we'll go over here to field. So this is the row, but it's the data that will exist here. And what I actually want to do is click into it and I want to go select client. Now it's showing us all of our clients. And in this case, across the columns here, we have the amount totals and the sales per amount. Again, it doesn't really show us a whole lot. We're going to click into the columns here. We'll see the different options we have. We have clients and date amount. None of those are all that helpful. I select date. It's going to show us all these different dates. Again, it's not that helpful. We have to go back to data. We're going to click here. We're going to add a new field type. I'm just going to type in the year and the month. We'll go into formulas and we're going to do a date format and we're going to bring in the date of the sale and we are just going to use following structure. We're just going to look at year and month, create that. And now we can see here the year 2017 and January. Here we can see January 1st, 2017. If we flip back to interfaces, this will give us a little bit more insights now into our data. If we click into the pivot table, go back down to columns, and we are going to pick the year and month option. And now it's going to group accordingly. You can see starting in 2017, January of 2017 specifically, and it will count all the way up. This view works all right, is we can see that this company here had two sales or two purchases from us in January of 2017. That gives us some insights into our data, but we want to take it a little bit further here. We're going to go to this appearance and summarize by. We're actually going to select a field to summarize by. The field is going to be the amount and the summary type is sum. So it looks like it automatically pulled in the correct information for us. This gives us a little bit more insights in detail. Now we can see that the solar tech in January of 2017, they had just over $5,000 worth purchases from us. And if we go across, we can see each month accordingly. And if we get to the very end, we can see the totals by each company in all of the time that they've existed or purchased from us all the way down. This is our total sales that exist from in 2017. And we can see totals that exist by month, year as well. This is a lot more helpful, shows us more insights into our data and gives us more details on what's actually going on within our business. We can take it a step further though. If we go into data, let's say we want to see total sales by month. We don't really care about the year, but we just want to see when our peak months are. We're going to go back into here. Actually, in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to just duplicate this field. We'll relabel this month. And what we're going to do here is just get rid of this and we'll just put in four capital M's. We'll save that and it's going to bring in the month for us. So we'll flip back to interfaces and click into this and we'll scroll down to columns and we'll select month. And now we can see across the 12 different months, we can see which months are largest. We will do going to actually sort by value, but we can see here now in the descending value, we can see here that January is our biggest month since we've started. 
and all the way down to March being our smallest month for total number of sales. It gives us some additional insights into the business. Again, if you want to go over here, we can just do a count and we can see total sales by month as well. And that's showing us so much value. And last thing, I just want to dive into this a little bit further. Let's say here that we actually wanted to view this data a little bit more detail by something like our salespeople. Let's say we have a few different salespeople and we want to see information based off of that in particular person. We'll go into here, bring in a salesperson table. We can add that. We'll delete these for now and I'll just put their name here. We'll just go John Smith. We are three salespeople. We're going to go into our sales. We're going to add an additional field. We'll just start typing in sales and select the salesperson field. We only want one salesperson per sale. We can bring them in now. And I'm just going to select this person, drag them all the way down, just add a bunch of example sales. If I click on the salesperson, we can see that there's a whole bunch of sales associated to this person. If we flip back to interfaces, go in here, I'm going to duplicate this one and I'll drag it down below so we can see a little bit more detail here. What we want to do here now is go down to the columns. I'm going to select a salesperson. And then from here, we can see the total sales per customer and their total sales in total. We can see that Bill had 150,000 in sales, John's 56,000, and Jane is 55,000. And we can see per customer how much they've had in total sales. And again, if we want to take this a little bit further one more time, we can go into filter by. Let's say if we're only interested in the year 2023 or 2024, we can go into here, select date, and we can make sure that it's within the calendar year. This calendar year, this is all sales within 2024. It looks like this person, this company here has been the only company that's made purchases within the year 2024. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials in the future.